Number 10. The hyphen in Spider-Man was added to create a clear distinction between Spider-Man, Marvel's web-slinging hero, and Superman, the iconic DC comic superhero. This stylistic choice helped in avoiding potential confusion between the two characters, emphasizing the unique identity of Spider-Man. Number 9. Former President Barack Obama has publicly mentioned that Spider-Man is one of his favorite superheroes. During his presidency, Obama even referenced Spider-Man in speeches and interviews, admiring the character's principles of using power responsibly to help others and make the world a better place. Number 8. Peter Parker's parents, Richard and Mary Parker, were depicted as having connections to espionage or covert operations, including affiliations with S.H.I.E.L.D. In these iterations, Richard and Mary Parker were occasionally portrayed as former S.H.I.E.L.D. agents or operatives involved in secretive missions. Number 7. Spider-Man Has Died Twice In the storyline titled, The Other Spider-Man is mortally wounded in battle and appears to die. However, he undergoes a transformation and is reborn with new powers, shedding his old skin and emerging with enhanced abilities. Superior Spider-Man, in this storyline Dr. Octopus, in a surprising turn of events, swaps minds with Peter Parker's Spider-Man. As a result, Peter Parker's mind seemingly dies in Dr. Octopus's body, while Dr. Octopus continues as the superior Spider-Man. Eventually, Peter Parker's consciousness returns, reclaiming his body and identity. Number 6. Peter Parker is depicted as having been born and raised in Forest Hills, a neighborhood located in the borough of Queens in New York City. Forest Hills is specifically highlighted as Peter Parker's hometown in the comic book lore, and it serves as an essential backdrop to his origin story and adventures as Spider-Man. Number 5. In the animated Spider-Man series, in the animated X-Men series, there is a shared continuity known as the Marvel Animated Universe, or Earth-92131. This designation represents a specific universe within Marvel's multiverse where these two shows coexist, allowing for occasional crossovers and shared elements between them. Number 4. Spider-Man's web dissolves within an hour and yet is strong enough to hold the Hulk for a little while at least. His web is faster than a bullet, in some situations Spider-Man has managed to web a gun as the trigger was pulled. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top three, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number three. In some interpretations of Spider-Man story, particularly older comic book issues, ethyl chloride was depicted as a temporary weakness or vulnerability for Spider-Man. Ethyl chloride was portrayed as a pesticide or chemical substance that had adverse effects on Spider-Man's abilities, particularly his spider sense and agility. Number two. In a storyline following the apparent death of the Human Torch Johnny Storm, Spider-Man temporarily joined the Fantastic Four, which was then rebranded as the Future Foundation. It took on a new mission, focusing on scientific innovation, exploration, and solving global issues. During this period, Spider-Man donned a new white and black costume to symbolize his membership in the Future Foundation. Number 1. The Rhino, a notable Spider-Man villain, was indeed created by writer Stan Lee and artist John Romita Sr., not by Steve Ditko. Rhino made his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man, number 41 in 1966. Steve Ditko, along with Stan Lee, co-created many iconic Spider-Man characters and villains during his tenure on the series, including Dr. Octopus, Sandman, and the Green Goblin. However, the Rhino was introduced after Ditko's departure from regular work on The Amazing Spider-Man. Thanks for watching. I hope you learn a few new things about our favorite wall crawler and we'll see you again very soon on the next video.